Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to the Unfiltered Brew Blog. I just wanted to take a minute to go over the various types of kegs that you can use and how they will benefit you. So let's get to it. So first would be the bulk of your batch. Uh, if you make five gallons or 10 gallons or how many, how whatever much beer you make, you immediately need a vessel to put it into after it's done fermenting. So you can go the route of bottling individually or you can keg. So kegging is probably the most easiest because it's the uh, quickest way to get a large amount with the least amount of work. If you were to bottle, you have to go through and fill each individual bottle, cap it, make sure you have your priming sugar in there. Uh, this one, you just kind of throw it all in here, put your CO2 to it and let it prime for a few days and then it's ready to go. But when it's time to go to a party and uh, you want to show your friends all the tasty beer that you just made, the problem is going to be transportation of this big guy because once it's full, uh, if you are, have kegged, you know this thing weighs about 30 pounds or so. It's just a pain to drag around, uh, it's store it and keep cold. I don't really know how else you can keep this thing cold unless you have space in a refrigerator. And even then, to put this in a refrigerator, I have to take off all the shelves. So the only thing that goes in there is the kegs because there's no room for anything else. And uh, not to mention you have to carry a big CO2 canister with you so that you can keep this thing pressurized so that it'll be continually used throughout the party. So what I use is I have these two mini kegs over here. Um, this one is a, about a gallon and this one is about a half gallon. These are a lot more stylish to take out with you if you're, if you're going to bring your beer out and, and take it out of the home and show it to somebody else. Uh, this one I like, it's from Growler Works, and this one I like because it's got a nice uh, aged look to it. It's got that, that bronze look, it looks like it's, it's something older and grounded in a sense of tradition. When traveling, it has a lock on it right here, which is nice so you don't spill when it's sitting in the car. And there's even a little gauge right here so you can see how much you have left, uh, as well as a, a pressure monitor at the bottom here. It's controlled by a, a variable knob, so you would just go ahead and dial in the amount of pressure. However, you have to continually adjust it throughout use so that you continue to re reach the correct amount that you would need, the correct pressure that you would need, which would be somewhere between three to five PSI. Both of these are pressurized by CO2 canisters that you would use. You have uh, little CO2 canisters like this one, and they just get, they look like such, and then they uh, would just fit on the sides here, and they would continually keep the beer pressurized as you use it. Having said that, one of the things that I don't like about this growler works is that the CO2 is on the inside. You have to physically open it and get to your canister, which would be on the inside here. The problem with that is if you are unable to dial in the pressure correctly, or uh, maybe it is over over pressurized or or maybe it by chance runs out before you use the whole amount of beer you're gonna uh, spoil it because you would have to open this whole thing back up exposing your beer to the air to refill your canister so you basically get one shot and then this guy is done I do like to keep this one in the fridge though because when I'm not using beer with it I can make a big pot of hot coffee, pour the coffee in here, and if you have, uh, and if you purchase just uh, some, some of the cream chargers, which is just uh, nitrogen gas, looks like this, then you can put them in there and it will keep uh, your coffee or maybe tea, uh, iced tea pressurized, and you can just enjoy it straight from the tap right there. Uh, it's, it wouldn't, it's not exposed to the air, so that way your uh, coffee would last longer and you can just have a nice iced coffee with this one. So this one comes in really handy and fits great on the shelf in, in the refrigerator as well. I also upgraded to this one because when I was taking this guy out to parties, uh, it would be used up too quickly and then I wouldn't have anything left. So it's basically good for one or two tastings for the amount of friends that you have and that's about it. The guy's tapped out. They do make uh, bigger ones for this. Um, however, I prefer this size because like I said, it fits in the refrigerator pretty well. 
I did upgrade to this one just so that I can experiment with uh, different types of kegs and uh, and try try different things out. What I like about this one is that it has a regular tap that you would normally that you would see at a commercial establishment, and the CO2 canister is a little bit larger and fits on the outside. So if you are not able to dial in your CO2 correctly and you happen to run out, then you can just replace this one without having to open it, exposing your beer to the air. It has a pressure gauge on here, as well as a, a variable dial so that you can control the pressure. And there's also, I'm not sure if you could see, but right over here there's also a release valve so that you can let out some of the air that would uh, consequently get, get stuck in here as you're changing your CO2 bottle. So this one will allow you to pressurize your CO2 and then release all the air that would get pushed up from the, from the gas. It just spins off and has a little tube that goes straight down to the bottom. And what's nice about this one is that you can switch this top out so that it'll work with your keg setup. So if you just want to keg this one right away or maybe get multiple uh, maybe get multiple mini kegs like this. You can just put a different tap on here and it will connect right to your existing CO2 in your keg setup. When I do take it out though, I find that this one fits perfectly inside of a cooler. So I would normally take an igloo cooler, fill it with ice, and I can set it right inside the, the cooler and the top will stick out just enough that you can still utilize the taps. And it's a perfect amount just to fit two right in a normal size cooler. Just put that puppy on wheels and uh, drag it into wherever you're going and immediately you're set up and ready to go. Hopefully this has been helpful if you're trying to decide uh, what kind of storage vessel you're gonna be putting your beer in as you brew it and um, how you're gonna utilize it once you put it in the container. Uh, if you're gonna be picking, taking it out, out of the home, uh, maybe something like this would be a better option for you uh, versus one of these big ones. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about home brewing, please feel free to subscribe and like my video. Thank you.